Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at a projectile motion problem using 2D kinematics. This one in particular is gonna be on not flat ground, meaning there will be an elevation difference, which obviously is gonna make the problem harder and we're gonna have a fun time solving this. So let's go ahead and get started with the problem. So I am someone who loves playing basketball. I am not good, but I do love playing it. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to do something that has never been attempted before in all of physics. We are going to shoot a basketball into a net like this. And so here's what I know about this basketball shot. When the ball leaves my hand, it is a height 1.8 meters above the ground. The basket is, let's say, a traditional 10 feet, which is about 3.0 meters high. We'll say that we are 4.5 meters from the basket, which is roughly 15 feet away. And what I want to be solving for, I want to solve for what velocity do I need to shoot this basketball at in order to make the shot. And let's assume I'm shooting at a 60 degree angle. So in other words, if I were to draw that right here, this angle right here, is 60 degrees. So how would we solve for velocity? Well, first you should remember how we solve kinematics problems in the first place, specifically projectile motion, 2D kinematics. You wanna split things up in the x-axis and the y-axis. Now, personally, I like to start with the y-axis because that's usually the best way to solve the problem is to start with the y-axis. And when I say start with the y-axis, I'm saying, I'm gonna ask myself, what's V initial? V final acceleration, the time, and the displacement delta y. And now I have to go through these variables one by one, starting with V initial. You'll obviously notice I do not know what V initial is. We can just call it V, or I can call it Vy, because it's the y component of my velocity. Now V final, we don't know V final. Don't say zero, because it's not zero. We don't know the speed as the ball goes through the hoop, which is the final V. Acceleration for the y-axis is always negative 9.8, so we do know that. The time we also don't know. There's no indication of time, so I'll put question mark for that as well. And then finally, the delta y. So delta y is, by definition, final height minus initial height. If I go back to my picture, this is my final height, the 3 meters. This is my initial height, the 1.8 meters. So if I do delta y, final minus initial, it's 3 minus 1.8. I'm gonna get positive 1.2 as my delta y. If I was going lower, it would be negative 1.2, but I am going higher because the basket's above the ball. Maybe the picture's not great, but it is going up 1.2 meters. So now I have two of the five variables, which is not enough to solve for, well, anything. So that means I'm probably gonna to go to the x-axis now and see what I know. So for the x-axis, I'm not going to do this. Instead, I just have one equation. It's vx equals delta x over t. And this is always true for projectile motion problems. You just have this one equation. The problem is I don't know vx. I do know delta x. So delta x is the 4.5. And the time is also unknown. However, these times are the same. So I do know that I'm going to be solving for time somehow in order to solve this problem. And so I'll tell you the best way to solve this is to solve for t in the x-axis and plug it in the y-axis. So what that means is if I solve for t, multiply t on both sides and divide by vx, I get t equals 4.5 divided by vx. Note, we still don't know what vx is. I don't care. It's fine for right now. Let me plug that in right here for time. It's 4.5 divided by vx. And now I have enough information to solve for whatever I want. All I gotta do is plug it into the equation that does not have V final in it, because I have no idea what that is. And the correct equation is gonna be this one. Delta Y equals V initial times time plus one half AT squared. This is the kinematic equation we'll need right now. So delta Y we know is 1.2 equals V initial, which I don't know. I called that VY. The time we do know, it's gonna be 4.5 divided by Vx plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times t squared. And t was 4.5 divided by Vx, and that whole thing is going to be squared. 
I would love to say we can solve from here, but the problem is we can't because I don't know two things. I don't know VY and I don't know VX. So it looks like I'm stuck. If it weren't for the fact that I have one more piece of information that I can use. I said that the shot, let me draw a right triangle right here. I said that the shot was at a 60 degree angle. Meaning if this is V, my velocity, and this is VY and this is VX, then I can use SOHCAHTOA to figure out a relationship here. And what I'm going to use is tangent because it has VY and VX in it. So in other words, tangent of 60 degrees is equal to VY, the opposite leg, over VX, the adjacent leg. And if I want, I can solve for VX or for VY here. It doesn't matter. So I'll solve for VY, I guess. So VY is equal to multiply both sides by VX. VX times the tangent of 60 degrees, which is the same thing as root 3 VX. And I knew that because I know tangent of 60 is root 3. If you did not know that, you have a calculator. It, I'm not worried for you. And now I'm going to plug in this. I'm going to substitute in root 3 VX for VY right here. And it's going to be 1.2 equals root 3 VX times 4.5 divided by VX plus 1 half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. And then the t squared. So 4.5 squared is 20.25. And then that's divided by vx squared. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. Mainly the vx's cancel right here, which is nice. So on the left I just have 1.2 equals root 3 times 4.5. I'll plug that in a calculator now. That's going to be 7.79. And then minus... What's 4.9 times 20.25? I get 99.2, and don't forget the vx squared is still in the denominator. So this is great. Now I just have the one variable I need to solve for. It's vx. Now you may be wondering, how am I going to solve this? So as far as algebra goes, the smartest thing to do would be to multiply both sides by my common denominator, which is vx squared. So that's going to get me left side 1.2 vx squared. On the right side, I get... 7.79 vx squared minus 99.2 because the vx squareds cancel on the last one. So I'll admit that was a little confusing. So if you're confused by this step, don't worry about it too much. Just focus on what we're doing now. And I need to solve for vx squared. So I will subtract 1.2 vx squared from both sides, group like terms together. I get 0 equals 6.2. 5, 9, vx squared minus 99.2. And then the easiest way to solve for vx is to first add 99.2 to both sides. So that gives us 99.2 equals 6.59 vx squared. Divide both sides by 6.59. And I get 15.1 equals vx squared. And then I just have to take the square root of both sides. So Vx is going to be, the square root of 15.1 is 3.88, that's meters per second. Keep in mind, whenever you take a square root, it's technically plus or minus. However, it makes no sense to include the negative for this one because, I mean, how can you have a negative velocity here? And I would love to say this is the final answer, except, of course, it's not. And the reason why is I wanted the initial velocity. What we found is just the x component of velocity. If you want to find the total velocity now, let me draw the triangle one more time. This was 60 degrees. We just found the x component is 3.88, and I basically want the hypotenuse. Notice I could find vy if I want to, but really I don't care. It doesn't matter. I just need to find this v right here. So for that reason, I am using cosine. The cosine of 60 degrees is adjacent, 3.88, divided by hypotenuse, which is v. Multiply both sides by V and divide by the cosine of 60. And this will get me a final answer of 7.76 meters per second. And that's how fast I need to throw this ball at 60 degrees if I wanted to get in the hoop. And so that is going to do it for this problem. I know it was hard, but just as a quick recap, all we did was, after drawing the picture, we wrote the x-axis and the y-axis. We started listing out the variables for the y-axis. Then we got stuck in the y-axis, so we moved over to the x-axis, which allowed us to solve for time. 
we plugged in the time in the y-axis, then we plugged it into this kinematic equation. We also use the right triangle with the tangent of 60 to get us down to one variable. And then the rest of the problem was really just algebra. So I don't really care about the algebra part. If the physics part, everything else made sense, then I'm happy for you. You're probably gonna be fine on the test. So if you do have any more questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.